Hello, everybody, and welcome to Money Matters. If you like learning about crypto and other investment topics and like to make money, then please subscribe to the channel. If you like the content, then hit that like button as well. Let's get into it. As usual, I am not a financial advisor, nor do I give financial advice. Let's take a quick look at the markets. Well, today was much better than it has been. We see a lot of green, several double digit greens, but I think that after the brutal bloodbath that we've had over the past few weeks, um, we're deserving of this type of activity. Um, I think that there still may be a possibility for one more event to take place, which would bring us down to probably the lowest cap, which would be 29.7, somewhere right around there. But I would probably give that maybe a 30% chance. Um, chances are we've already bottomed out on this last manipulation round, and we should be slowly grinding back up. And again, I do not think that this is going to be something where we have a quick jump to the top. It's going to be a slow grind out and then a sudden pop at the end. So just keep your eyes open. Don't be afraid. And uh, we'll get through it one way or another. And please don't sell. Don't sell down low. It's not a good thing to do. Let's take a look at the news because there's uh, some interesting things that have been happening um, that are really um, pretty impressive, to be honest with you. Um, first of all, the Department of Justice did track down s at least some of the money that was taken in the Colonial Pipeline um, ransomware attack. And despite all claims that they did all kinds of hocus pocus magic, it was actually uh, somebody on the inside who gave them a tip that led them to identify the exchange in the wallet where uh, this transaction was taking place and they were able to circumvent that and recover some some of the money. I think it was most of the money. And then the big news of the day, of course, is El Salvador. They have officially adopted Bitcoin as legal tender uh, for the nation. And um, this is fantastic news. This is the first country that's done this and kudos to them for taking the leap and jumping out to do it. I think it's absolutely amazing. And I've heard that there's a, quite a few other countries, especially in South America, that are, are following the same path. And um, we'll jump on that uh, crypto bandwagon as well. I'm not really sure. I, th I know that Panama and uh, Brazil were looking at it. So I think within the next probably the next few weeks or the next month or so, we should be seeing some other countries that jump on board and uh, adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. And again, I think that this is just going to turn into a snowball and it'll be a, just a matter of time. And it seems like a shorter period of time for uh, most of the countries around the world to adopt this, not as a replacement, not as a replacement, but as legal tender. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in the United States as far as classification goes, if it will still remain an asset once that takes place, because it will take place here eventually. And uh, at that point in time, I think we're going to see some additional clarification on uh, description and especially with reference to taxes and cryptocurrency. So more to come on that. And they may treat other cryptocurrencies different from Bitcoin. I really, I really don't know. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Glassnode, uh, this was this was kind of interesting too, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this. But there seems to be a lot of um, online activity with respect to exchanges losing cryptocurrency balances, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. In fact, I have a couple of charts to talk about it a little bit later on. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is is unraveling, this has taken a couple of days to unravel exactly what's been going on within the market to cause this drop. And I hate to disappoint, but the fact of the matter is, is that all fingers are pointing to the fact that there was additional market manipulation with respect to whales and investment uh, um, institutional investors manipulating the market to their benefit. In other words, um, shorting on the way down, and then once we hit the bottom levels, buying back up. And it was interesting because my understanding was that the target level was somewhere right around 30,000 or lower, but for some reason it was just getting snacked up very quickly. So I think there may have been some disconnect with some of the conspirators <laughs> or the, the 
players, they're on the team. <laughs> But um, they started buying a little too early, so the price didn't go down below 30. However, it did shake out a lot of retail investors. And we're going to see what happened to uh, that Bitcoin. Uh, not only Bitcoin, but uh, we're going to see what happened here in just a moment. I think that there was, uh, and remember, when there's this type of manipulation, there's news events, there's activity, there's stories, there's things that happen that make retail investors act or react in a specific, a very specific way. And typically when the price of Bitcoin is coming down, the idea is to instill fear so that people let go of their Bitcoin at a lower price so that institutions and people who have lots of money can buy it back up. But there are some actual news activities that could have, you know, possibly uh, had a psychological effect. And remember this, this market at all markets are driven by psychology, human, human emotion. That's what drives markets. And um, if you don't have control over your emotions, you don't have control over your money. So get on that. Um, there's been a cascade of pressure in China to shut down uh, mining facilities. In fact, um, there was a, a story today um, that came out and it was, I can't pronounce it. It's Quing. Qinghai province, and it ordered all of their crypto money facilities to shut down. And it is, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's the largest area of uh, geographic area that, that has established Bitcoin mining facilities within it. So this is a big deal. They are going seriously all out to shut down mining within this country. And, um, Again, I think it's a great opportunity for the rest of the world to pick up the slack. It's kind of concerning how fast it's taking place and to the level that it's taking place, but they have an agenda for their own central currency, uh, crypto coin and um, the digital one, and they are <laughs> come hell or high water, they're gonna push that thing out the door. So I think they just want everything else out. It's gonna be interesting to see if people within that country kind of go underground with respect to Bitcoin as far as using it. I, I don't think that any large scale mining will be able to take place there uh, in the future because they will be monitoring it and they will be <laughs> viciously going after people who are doing that. Um, there's been some concern in the economy, and I, I mean in the news about the economy, and a lot of this has to do with inflation and this inflation bug is just going crazy. I mean, they're, they have service, they have consumer inflation, they have all these different inflation numbers that they're talking about and how they're disjoint or connected. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that with all the, the quantitative easing that the, um, the government has been putting in place because of the pandemic, uh, there's been a, basically a free for all for printing money and basically spending money as well. And there's rumors that this, the economy is really coming around and that this is going to be stopping uh, in the near future fairly abruptly. Now, I would disagree with that. I don't think they, they being the federal government can do that. The reason being that they already started this train down the track and you can't just turn it off. It has to slow down gradually or else it will completely destroy the economy. We will fall into a pretty, abysmal time. So they're going to have to ease off of it, so to speak, as opposed to shutting it off. So will it come anytime soon? No, it will not. It will continue through the rest of the year. And I think that Biden's, uh, I, I don't know how many trillions of dollars it is now, but his um, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure package, which has been bungled up with a bunch of other stuff, will go through. It'll go through at a lower dollar amount uh, because they're going to have to get some Republicans on board as well. But it will go through. So <clears throat> the um, the, the help that the federal government is doling out will continue. Now, will we see any more stimulus checks or anything like that? I don't think so. It may be that if there are stimulus checks, it'll go to a very select uh, group of people who perhaps have been hit specifically hard or, or I, I'm not really sure how they would define that, but as, a, as the facts have been rolling in, there's a lot of people who aren't going to work because they're getting paid to stay home, which is not what it's for. And um, <clears throat> those people do need to go back to work. They need to find work and they need to start, um, you know, filling those open positions that are open and get the economy running in a, in a natural state, not a, an artificial state. Uh, 
kind of a piggyback off of this is um, uh, Deutsche Bank in, in Germany, which is one of the largest banks in Europe, <clears throat> it's one of the largest banks in the world, really, um, put out an indicator that said, and this is, <laughs> this is not surprising, and uh, pretty much any economist could say the same thing, but uh, the money printing that basically has been going on in the United States is going to uh, establish a baseline and we will have the most massive inflation that we've seen since 1975. And I can attest to the fact that the inflation in 1975 was very bad. It was not a pretty sight. It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. Uh, whether that happens, I really don't know. I tend to think that the controls that are in place now would be better at handling the, the brevity of the situation, but we'll have to see. You can't just keep printing money forever, so and it, it won't solve that problem. So we'll have to kind of just wait and see for that as well. <clears throat> One other in, interesting note, uh, institutional buys for ETH, and this was, uh, I think it was since, at least for the last week, um, represented 26.8% of locked up crypto investment uh, products after receiving, and just this week it was 33 million. The amount of money, institutional money that's going into ETH right now is staggering. I've been trying to find definitive uh, numbers for Bitcoin versus Ethereum, but everything that I've read s shows that Ethereum is scaling much faster than Bitcoin. And it could be because they see Ethereum as a more attractive price right now, or they could be listening to 2.0 release information, or the fact that most of all the blockchain dApps that are built currently today are built on Ethereum. I really don't know, but the fact of the matter is, is there's heavy institutional investing in ETH, and we're gonna see a chart a little bit later on that kind of shows that. So I wanted to show you this uh, chart and I've, I've showed this in previous videos before but what this is showing is Bitcoin pricing and it shows whale activity at its peak peak being when they're most interested in selling or buying and so there's a, a white uh, a white square which shows selling pressure and then there's a uh, green one that shows uh, buying pressure and you can see the activity flurry of activity between the two. This happens more often than you might think. And again, when we talk about manipulation of the market, we talk about people who hold a lot of Bitcoin starting to short it, sell it at a high price and then short it. And then when the price drops based on the selling pressure and gets to the bottom, they buy back in as fast as they can before the price starts to go back up, of course. That shakes out retail investors, that, that moves the, the piles of Bitcoin from the retail people or the people to the elite few. And um, they just pull it off the market for the time being and go into, into cold storage. So in my opinion, everything that I've seen shows that this has been another orchestrated dip. And whether it was initiated by Elon Musk's tweet breaking up with Bitcoin, I really couldn't tell you. I had this uh, discussion with somebody earlier today. I personally think that it might. I mean, if you're a billionaire, who's your friend? Other billionaires, because who can you trust except for other billionaires? <laughs> Although I don't know why you would trust them because all they want to do is take everybody's money. But anyway, they, they probably are friends and they probably have their own little clique or whatever. And um, maybe that was a signal to e from Elon to his uh, cohorts to, hey, let's, let's put this in motion now. Because it wasn't the first time that we had a dip after Elon Musk said something. And the fact of the matter is, is that his sway in such subtle manners is not that great, in my opinion. Anyway, I, I think he's a great man. I think he's done great things, but this is just silly. So let's take a look at um, exchange net flow. So, when we talk about these these uh, orchestrated dips and money coming in or Bitcoin moving hands, this chart will show you how fast these Bitcoin are leaving the exchanges. And it's, it's just in massive amounts. So if you think about that, 
it's not everybody's thinking we're in a bear market we're not in a bear market we're still in a bull market we're just getting all kinds of bear indicators here and it's because of manipulation and it's because of diminishing returns and it's because the extension of the time period that the bull market is running and that to me is a natural market event there however this is not when these when these orchestrated events happen and they garner they being whales and rich people garner these giant uh, sums or piles of Bitcoin, they're not selling it. They're taking it off the exchanges. They're putting it into cold storage, waiting for the next event to take place. Sad but true. We're looking at like 28, I think it was 28,000 Bitcoin that were, were leaving the exchanges. Now, as bad as that is, it's a bullish sign. It means that there's demand for Bitcoin. It's just been skewed in a very unnatural way. So, Net net, we're, we're still in a bear a bull market and we're still having great activity. We're just seeing terrible things happen with respect to price dips and corrections because of manipulation in the market. Now, to add on to that, as I spoke of earlier with respect to Ethereum, 704,000 ETH have left exchanges since May. And we're what? We're in the first week of June, right? And this is, this is an extended period of time. So it makes sense if whales are buying and institutions are buying ETH at, in greater amounts, they're not going to just sit there and wait for the price to go up and sell it and trade it or anything like that. No, they're not doing that. They're taking it off and putting it in cold storage. Let me ask you a question though. You might want to think about this too. How long do you think it's going to be until you start to see corrections, quote corrections, in Ethereum that are manipulated price market? activity based on whales or somebody who's wanting to short Ethereum. My guess is that when Ethereum surpasses like seven or 8,000 or even perhaps to 12 when it gets into double digits, then we're going to see some manipulation in the market. It'll happen exactly as it happens with Bitcoin. There'll be FUD in the news. There'll be all kinds of things coming out. And next thing you know, retail investors are going to start to get all excited in a negative way and then whales are going to start dumping off their ETH and shorting it and then retail sellers are just going to dump and then people are going to buy it in. The reason it's not happening right now is number one I think because of the price, number two is because of the supply. When ETH starts to burn supply, 2.0 comes around and there's more stability in the supply, then we might see some heavy manipulation. But until now, um, or at least now, you can just take away the thought that they're buying and they're buying a lot and they're taking it off the exchange. And again, is that bearish? No, that's bullish. That means there's a high demand and people are still buying. So let's do a little bit of a recap. I know this, this video was a little bit late, but I wanted to make sure that I kind of had all the information correct before I started talking about it. In my mind, this is a clear event that was orchestrated. Um, they're, were news activities or news stories that came about in conjunction with this activity that were legitimate. I mean, China cracking down, El Salvador, you know, whatever. I'm just saying that there's, it was definitely a market manipulation, just like it was a couple of weeks ago uh, when we had it. This was very sudden. I, I mean, I did not see this coming at all. It caught me completely off guard. But the fact of the matter is, is it's done and over. I seriously do not think that we're going to see another correction or another big dip. If we do, there's probably less than a 30% chance. And if it does, it's not going to 20. It'll probably go somewhere right around 29. And then it'll recover just like it did here. It'll take maybe about a week to do that. But my guess is, is that we're going to start to creep up to the upside. I've been tracking really heavily on um, uh, charting and we're we're continually showing that that's the trend that we're, we're going after right now. But you never know, we'll, we'll see how that turns out. <clears throat> but in the meantime, rest assured that there are going to be lots and lots and lots of bad days, but there's gonna be lots and lots of good days too. And please don't sell at the bottom. It's not the time to sell. It's gonna come back. If you had enough thought to get into the market to um, wait for the price of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency to go up, then, then stay in the market. Stay and wait till your plan is executed. You shouldn't be playing with money that you can't afford to lose anyway, so there should be no panic involved in it. And any profits that you've built up, well, take some of those profits and then just ride the storm out. 
it's just that simple. Uh, try to really control your emotions and, and uh, blockchain backer talks about keeping an emotional journal where he writes down, you know, how he feels every day, you know, with respect to the market, whether it's going up and down, if he's sad, mad, scared or whatever, so that he can refer back to it on similar such days and understand his thought process and have better control over what's happening currently. So nothing but a good, good uh, exercise there. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this theory. Um, I'd love to know if people took any profits uh, during this drop and, and specifically because it was such a surprise. Um, if you did, did you take profits um, because you were paring down your position or did you take profits honestly because you got into the fear boat and you were afraid and you sold some of your, uh, some of your bags because of that? I would be to, uh, interested to know. And then let me know what you think about the price of Bitcoin. Do you think that we are done with going down and we're going to go up? Or if we still have some manipulation to go. And last, but certainly not least, winners never quit. And quitters never win. Always give your very best effort to overcome the challenges that you face in life. I hope you had a great day. I had a great, great day. And I'll see you tomorrow.